allowed his son to die on a cross for our iniquity and our sins. You can cut the music back there, please. Um, it's just so awesome when you think about the goodness of the Lord, how much he loved us enough to give his son to die in our stead. God bless you, Pastor Owens and Sister Owens. So we're going to go ahead and, and give God praise at this moment. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we worship you. God, we magnify your name. We exalt you, O oh Lord. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Can you turn on the lights up here too, please? I forgot to turn on all the lights. Glory to God in the highest. Blessed be his name. I just want to start off singing, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. One more time. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice, and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has May. Amen. Amen. We can rejoice on Good Friday afternoon because this is the day the Lord has made. And when you know that God made this day, you don't mind giving him praise. Amen. Why don't you stand for a word of prayer? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to gather in this place. We ask God to release your anointing in the atmosphere. Fill this room, O oh God, with your presence. Let your fire fall afresh upon every heart to change us, to cleanse us, to perfect us. That we'll be more and more like you in our daily walk and daily living. We ask that you be glorified on today, O oh God. As we worship your majesty and be remembering, Father God, the death and the burial of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How he paid the ultimate sacrifice 
for our redemption. That we, Father God, will be entitled to the new life that's found in knowing you. We give you thanks for every person that gathered in this place, oh God. That you touched our hearts and changed our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started with the seven last words of Jesus today. Amen. I know some people is following a different order than what we had on last year versus to what I had this week. God has given me, but nevertheless, we're going to continue to praise the Lord anyhow because he's worthy of the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. Amen. So on first on our list today, we're going to have um, Minister LaShonda come forth with the word God has given her regarding my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Amen. And then following that, we're going to have uh, Deacon Davis come with Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. And then we'll continue after that. So at this time, I have Minister LaShonda come forth and bring the message God has given her. That we can get a clear understanding of the seven last sayings of Jesus and how important it, it is to our conviction and our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. We just hallelujah give you praise today, God. Hallelujah for being an excellent father, God. An excellent way maker, a mighty strong tower in the midst of every situation. God, we come to you right now, God. Hallelujah. Laying every situation at your feet, Father God. Hallelujah. We forever give you the praise and all the honor for being an excellent God. Hallelujah. An excellent provider, an excellent way maker. Everything that we need, God, we give you praise, God. We give you honor and all the glory. And hallelujah for being excellent. We give you just what we need to give you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for blessing our families. We thank you for blessing our mothers, our sisters, our fathers. Hallelujah. Thank you for doing all that you have done in our life, God, and taking us deeper to your throne, God, like never before, God. Show us your glory right now. God, show us who you are, God. Hallelujah. Show us that you are the great I am, hallelujah, and that you're the bright and morning star, hallelujah. You're the peace beyond all peace, the joy beyond all joy, hallelujah, the love that's everlasting love, hallelujah, and the peace, hallelujah, that surpasses all understanding shall guide our heart and mind. Lord, we give you praise, God. We give you glory, hallelujah. We give you honor, God, because you deserve it right now, God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for being good. Hallelujah. Thank you for being Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. Jehovah Shalom. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. We give you all the praise, God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We give you all the honor and the glory. Hallelujah. For blessing us on this wonderful day, God. That you're awesome. Hallelujah. That you died on the cross for us. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Hallelujah. These were your last seven words, God. Hallelujah. That just, hallelujah, melts my soul and just take me deep into the presence of the Most High. I shall abide under your Almighty. We thank you, God. Woo, hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. Oh, God, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We lift your name on high, Lord Jesus. Lord, you increase where I may decrease in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let your glory reign on me today as I speak your word. Let your presence fall in this place right now, God. Souls will be saved, God. People delivered, hallelujah, from whatever they may be going through. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and all the glory and all the honor. Amen. Thank you, Father God. Glory to your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We got a reason to praise him. We got a reason to lift him up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He didn't have to die on a cross for us. He did. Hallelujah. He did just what he needed to do in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to name this um, the death of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
because he deserved it. Hallelujah. He deserved the glory and all the honor for just being so excellent. Hallelujah. For being the great I am. Ooh, I just love him. I don't know. I, I don't know what to do without him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read this scripture. We can all stand. It's uh, Matthew 27. I'm sorry. 27 and 46. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. I'm going to just start at uh, um, Matthew 27 and 45 because, you know, it's better to start from the top. So from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land above, um, excuse me, about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. El, is it Eli? Is it Eli? E, yeah, Eli. I'm sorry. Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabachani. Uh-oh. Close enough. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why haven't you... Whew, forsaken me Jesus hallelujah was expressing his feelings of abandonment as God placed the sins of the world on him hallelujah but you know what he stood still he just kept on pressing toward the mark of the high calling even though all that was going on he stood y'all can stand, sit down I'm sorry but he he stood still in the midst of all of that God's glory reigned hallelujah in the earth he still was ever able to bless us he was able to you know heal us and able to just in, endure in the pain and the frustration everything that he's going through he felt like you know he was abandoned but he wasn't abandoned because God was right there with him hallelujah <clears throat> As God placed the sins of the world on him. And because of that, God had to run, turn from Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. And Jesus was feeling that weight of a sin. Hallelujah. But he kept on pressing toward the mark of the high calling. He kept on pressing. Hallelujah. He kept on looking deep. I mean, going deep into whatever the situation that was going on. He just fell into the presence of, the, of God and just was like, I know what I have to do. I have a purpose. I have a plan. Things have to be done. And I got to keep on pushing into my purpose. Whatever the purpose purpose and that was God's plan for for that to be the way it happened where he died on the cross for us hallelujah and did all the things he did for us hallelujah that was God's plan hallelujah that was God you know it was it was bound to happen because that was what the purpose and the plan for it to happen you know so we just have to keep on trusting because even though sometimes things don't happen the way you want it to happen but we have to keep on trusting in God and knowing that all things are possible through him hallelujah I mean, we be having so much stuff on our backs and just frustration and we be going through so much, but it, it, it felt like we'd be weighed down. But if we just look to the hills with coming our help, it comes from God. Uh, the, you know, it comes from him. He's the peace that surpasses all the understanding that will guide our hearts and mind. Hallelujah. But he stood still in the midst of all of that. Even though all that was on him, he kept on pressing. You know, he kept on, you know, take that beating. Every, every time they... That you know, whew, everything that they, you know, laid on him, every situation that was thrown at him, he kept on pressing. He kept on enduring. Hallelujah. Uh oh. He kept on enduring all things because he 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 knew that there was going to be peace in the end. He knew joy was going to be in the end. He knew everything that was going to be in the end. He he knew something great is going to come out of this. He knew it. He knew it. So he just had to keep on pressing. Keep on pressing on knowing that all things are possible through him. Hallelujah. Through God. Hallelujah. He knew it. So we just have to do the same thing and keep on trusting in him because he's able to heal us. He's able to deliver us out of our situations. I don't care how rough it looks. I don't care how rough it seems. Know that God is able to do it. Hallelujah. As Jesus was feeling the weight of sin, he was experiencing a separation from God for the only time in all eternity. <clears throat> This was also a fulfillment of the prophetic statement in Psalms 22 and 1. Here, let, me, let me go to that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But in, in the midst of all that, I'm, I'm going to go to that Psalm 22 and 1. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, 22 and 1. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Why haven't I forsaken me? Hallelujah. It's the same thing. <clears throat> Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my warning? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, I'm, I'm not silent. Hallelujah. So God is still, he's still doing all the things that he needs to do. 
even in the midst of the hurt and pain he's going through, he's still enduring and trusting in him, trusting in all things, hallelujah, because he make all things well. He's working out all our situations. I don't care what it look like. I don't care what it seem. Trust in the Lord. He will make a way. Hallelujah. He will make a way for you. I mean, it, it may look weary and a little uh, just crazy, but just know that God is able to fix it. Hallelujah. He's able to, hallelujah, fill you with his joy. He's able to fill you with his happiness. Whatever he has for you, he will do it. Ten times better than the best. I know that for myself. I, I live it every day, so I know he's going to be there for you. So keep trusting in him, hallelujah, for all things, hallelujah, because he does it well, hallelujah. He does it well. And it doesn't, look, it, it doesn't I don't care if it seems like your back is up against the wall and you're weary and well do, know that God is able to fix it, and he will do that in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, because God, he's able to um, fix, hallelujah, <clears throat> situations that's really born just messed up all the way toe up you know but he's i know who he is he's he's the great i am and um he's the bright and morning star like i said and just keep trusting in him and he will give you peace in the midst of the storm amen so this this <clears throat> thank you jesus amen Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That was beautiful. Also, I want to uh, just um, let, let everybody know that Pastor wasn't able to make it today as well because he had a uh, death in the family out of town. So that's the reason why he's not here today. But we, like I said, we're going to proceed anyhow. So next we're going to have Deacon Davis come forth. With Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. I was kind of just didn't know what to do when Pastor Henry called me Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> And asked me to do this. And my sister told me what Pastor said. We should be ready in and out of season. So bear with me. I'm going to try to do my best today. If I had to make a title for this today, it is time. The Bible definition of forgiveness is, understand is as God's promise not to count our sins against us. Biblical forgiveness requires repentance on our part. Turn it away from our old life of sin and have faith in Jesus Christ. In Luke 23 and 34, they have nailed Jesus to the cross. He has accepted what has happened to him, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. For what they have did to him is they beat him. But yet and still, he had the will to say, Father, forgive them. Those who beat him, he still gave them a way to salvation. So therefore, we as human beings, we need to learn to forgive. We need to let those things go so that we will have a way to salvation. We sit up and we hold so many things against people. And reading this and studying this lesson made me realize that I have somebody in my life that I have to go to and apologize because I've been holding so much against them. So I'm quite sure I'm not the only one. But I realized this today, and I will make amends for that today. And It's such a hard thing. Forgiveness is such a hard thing to do, but it is a necessity. It is a necessity for our salvation. And Mark 11 and 26 says, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which in heaven, forgive you. So therefore, that's telling us, if we do not forgive, neither will our Father forgive us. When we go to, when we pray to him and say, forgive me for my sins, if we don't forgive, he's not going to hear us. 
So we need to learn this. The key to this is in John 15 and 12. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. So he's given us instructions. But we have to learn to take those instructions and put them into use. See, Pastor Emery and Pastor Anderson, they teach us all the time. Even on Sunday morning, they come up to us and they say, when we read Mark 11 and 23, they say, they go over that, when they hit that part about forgive, they repeat it, forgive, because it is important. And I just want to say that on today, I am happy to say that thank you because you sent something into my spirit because I learned something that no matter how I read the Bible, I need to study because I can read something. I need to start from Genesis and start in the beginning. When it said in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, I need to study that. I don't need to pass it. I need to sit down and study that so that whenever I'm called on, I'm ready. So today I just want to say thank you for this opportunity, and I hope I change somebody's life with this because I know I changed mine. Next we have Minister Pastor Denise. Pastor Denise is next talking about um, I tell you the truth, today you should be me in paradise. Amen. So let's give her a hand as she come forth. I don't know about you all, but this is good. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Amen. You know, one thing about, about the word of God, when you get a revelation, an understanding of what the Lord had to go through for us, it makes you grateful. Amen. You know, I, I love you, uh, Deacon Willie, for that, because you're right. We have to study the word all the time to keep it in our spirit, because if we don't study that word, what's going to happen? We find ourselves empty. So how can you tell somebody else about the word of God if you don't know the word for yourself? You know, and I thank God for this, you know, uh, the seven last words, because this keep keeping us in remembrance of what Christ had to go through in our stead for us. Amen. I'm sorry, Charles. To God be the glory. God is able to do everything but fail. Yeah, I'm a living witness of what God can do. And I just want to truly thank God for every opportunity that I'm able to come before him and you, my God's people. Let me just pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you are able to do all things, but you have never failed us. Lord, I just come before you today, and I ask you to just bless each and every one of us, God, as I come forward in your word, God. 
Use me to your goodness and your mercy for this Good Friday service. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, it was just shared with me, and uh, I'm just thanking God. Let me read my scripture to you. It says, And Jesus has said unto him, As surely I would say unto you today, you will be with me in paradise. Um, I just want to share with us today, have you ever been promised something? You know, have you ever been made a promise? And all through Jesus' life, and all through the word, God has promised us. There are many promises in the Bible. Amen? There are many promises in the Bible. And because there are many promises, God will, ma he will give us his word and he will fulfill what he says. Amen? He will, fill every, he will fulfill every promise. Well, I want to share with you today. He's fulfilling one right now, <laughs> even as I speak. <laughs> but it was at this time when uh, Jesus was on the cross, and um, one of the uh, one of the thieves were um, Jesus was still witnessing. That's what it was about. Even as Jesus was dying. He was witness in church. Even as we die, we need to be able to line up. As my brother came, who came before me, was talking about forgiveness and what we're going to need to do. We need to have our life as a witness before God. Our life should truly be a witness. Amen. Amen. But here we have Jesus on the cross, and they even had a conversation going on. At the time of death, are we going to be able to talk, y'all? Will we be able to just bring out the good news gospel in spite of the way we feel, in spite of the way we act at times? Will we be able to really, really share the truth and the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, this was the moment that Jesus was at a, a really tough time because Sometimes we we wanna we wanna trust in our natural self, but we never know what God got planned for us, right? Well, he began to share with him. He told the um, the thief that, uh, and he almost he actually they 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 said everything that we would tell one another if uh, they went they had a, a nice conversation. But it was not just a nice conversation. Jesus knew he was on his way out of here, y'all. We never know when we're going to be on our way out of here. I'm kind of letting God flow me through this here. But when somebody promises you something, you wait on it, okay? Because what Jesus promised and what he gave the thief that hour, he began to share with him eternal life, y'all. And I don't know whether that thief believed it at but he sure was for Jesus. The other one, he wasn't for Jesus. He didn't even believe. Amen. But the thing I like about him, and, and, and that was, is that when you got faith, faith will carry you a long way. Amen. It'll carry you in places that even I can't see, or none of us can see with the natural eye. The natural eye can't see what God has planned for us. Amen. But it was at that hour, I like the power and the authority that Jesus was using, and he was steady persuading the loss. He was right there sharing truth. And believe me, where he was going, he'd know where he was going. But I just want to share y'all with y'all. Do you know where you're going when you leave here? And is it anybody you ever promised somebody something that you wasn't able to fulfill that promise? And that's something we personally can answer ourselves to God. Amen. We can share that with God. The promise that was made. I never gave this a title because it was shared with me. But if I was to share it with you, 
did you were you have, did you ever give somebody a promise that you broke? Did you ever share something with somebody that you weren't able to truly fulfill? If you did, you know, we got Jesus. We can trust in Jesus. And what I saw him do on the cross and what he shared with um, that newcomer, he was a newcomer. But what he shared with the thief was, you can have eternal life if you repent and ask for forgiveness. And when we repent, God, he's going to work it out, okay? He's going to work it out. We can repent and play with ourselves if we want. But we serve a mighty God who is able to do all things but fail. He will never, he'll never fail you, church. He's never failed me. And I'm still looking for better. Amen. So to God be the glory, y'all. Be with me. Don't, don't make no broken promises. But we need to stick to the promises that Christ has given us, amen, out of his word. To God be the glory. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Charles. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> you know what? I kind of mixed things up for myself. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing about it, because... <laughs> The order everybody was going by was the order we had last year, and I found something different, which is the, the order of the four Gospels according to Matthew and then Luke and John and the way things were written in that order. However, God is so good anyhow. Because <laughs> even in our blunders, <laughs> he still gets the glory. So I was supposed to do the last one, but because I gave it to Pastor Anthony, I'm doing number four, but I'm going to sum it all up in the end anyway. Amen. And we're going to get out of here. So the one I have is, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And that would be Luke 23, 46. Let me go back to my Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it says, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. I, I love this passage of scripture in Luke, the way he describes the, the, uh, the last hour of our Savior. Because one thing about Jesus, as he was going through the suffering and the agony and the persecution, everything that everyone just mentioned before, he still had mercy. He still provided forgiveness. Still had compassion. Even on the point of going to the cross to die. Even hanging on the cross, he still was able to communicate love. Hang between two thieves. One on the right saying, if you be the son of God, come down and save yourself and us. And the other, on, the other, on the other side, saying, when you enter to your kingdom, remember me. That is so awesome. Which shows the sovereignty of God. Even at the point of death, he still had a heart to reach God's people, even hanging on a cross. It's so amazing how it captivates our attention when he says, he says, Father... I give up my spirit, which is at the point of the last hour. He's saying, you know what? I done completed the work I had to do. I done done what I was called to do. I, I, I was ridiculed. I was mocked. I was rejected by people. And at the same time, God, I, I, I give my spirit the same place I came from. Now I'm ready to descend back to the place to where you are. So he was ascending after descending. So he descended when he was on the cross, when in humanity, but once he gave up his spirit, it ascended back to the Father. And that's the glory in this, how Jesus, hanging on an old rugged cross, said, Father, I, 
I'm here. I've done what you told me to do. You're forsaking me, God. Why are you turning your back on me? But God still demonstrated love. Which shows us an indication of how we are today. That even when we turn our back on Jesus and continue to live a sinful lifestyle, Jesus still hung there on the cross for you and I and said, Father, I commend my spirit. He gave up the ghost. He gave up the humanity. He gave up everything that made him Jesus in the earth. He said, Lord God, now my assignment has been completed. The redemptive work has been completed. Now, God, I'm giving myself back to you. That you will be glorified. Even in this last hour, God, as I'm hanging on this cross, it's not about me, God, but it's about your people, God, who's standing around. Even the ones who once walked with me, even when Jesus was going into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, and the people begin to cry out, Hosanna, Hosanna, to bless me, you come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna means save us. So he, they're crying out, these are the very ones. The very ones that witnessed the miracles. The very ones that seen the raise the dead, Lazarus from the dead. The same people are the ones that are right there gathered around the cross. But Jesus, still full of love and mercy, said, Father, I've done what I'm supposed to do. Now I'm yielding myself back to you, God, because I done completed the work. The rest is up to you. Jesus knew that once he gave up the ghost, it was going to be over. But one thing about it, even to the point of dying on the cross, he never gave up. He never said a mumbly word. He gave himself for a fallen generation, for a people who didn't care nothing about him. At the very end of his life, Jesus was hanging on the cross, and the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn down in the middle. God showed me something. How it says, when the sky became darkened, it said the veil that was in the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. Anytime a, a, a veil is being torn, it's usually ripped from the bottom up. That shows the magnitude of God's power that even at the strike of the hour of darkness, the veil that was separated between you and God was torn that we can have the right to come before his presence. Glory to God. And then he cried with a loud voice. Father, into your hands, I commit, I release, I surrender, I give it up to you, God. But he didn't say with a quiet voice. He said with a loud voice. And you know why it was a loud voice? So everyone around, even the demons in hell, can hear his voice. Crying out to the Father, Father, I commend my spirit. Father, the hour has come for you to be glorified as the Son is being glorified on the cross. And he says, until thy hands, because he loved us enough to the point of death, that even the demons in hell trembled at this hour. But one thing about it, Satan thought he won the victory. But God had to prove to him that even on the old rugged cross, that Jesus still had authority to speak in the atmosphere and command the people around to hear the voice of God speaking in the last hour. Father! I commend my spirit. And one thing about it, even in the Psalms, it was recorded that into thy hands I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Isn't that something? How God redeemed us when he hung on the cross. 
He gave up the ghost. God says, now redemption can go to work. Because there are so many people who were gathered around the cross. Didn't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. But Jesus had something to do with them. You didn't want to have anything to do with him. But his death had something to do with you. Because they proved their love of God. For God commended his love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Amen. I'm going to quit right there. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Who's uh, Charlene is next. Prophet Young is next. Have her come forth. The word God has given her. One behold your son. Amen. In the book of John, I'm going to start at the 25th verse, and I'm going to work my way down to the 27th verse. 25th verse says, oh, chapter 19, uh, 19 John 19, 25th verse. And it says, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sisters, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Madeline. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he says unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he says unto the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took unto his own home, took her into his own home. And if I have to title this, the title is The Pain, The Pain of Concern. The Pain of Concern. And when, 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 when you get to this part right here, this part is more compassionate, affectionate, full of love, care, and concern. Because Jesus here, his body, on, while he's on this cross, his body beaten, broken, and torn. But he said, he looked, he took time in spite of all that, that he was going through. He took time to view, look, and see that his mother was at the foot of the cross. And he says, and he says to her, woman. See, woman sounds like it's a disrespectful word. Because he called a woman. See, in the English, it looks like it's just so disrespectful. But take it to the Greek, and you'll find out that woman was the honored word that he honored his mother as dear mother. A dear mother. And you can tell just by him being on the cross, going through all of this pain, going through all of this agony in his body, and he looked and he see her. He was concerned. He was very much concerned 
about his mother that he would look down and see her at the foot of his cross. Out of all the time, he walked, and everywhere that he walked, everywhere that he went, she was there. A mother with concern as well. Because she was there. She was concerned about everything that he did. She was there. Unlike today, we, we have some mothers who is not there. But we're we, we talking about Jesus and his mother still letting us know that, hey, being concerned and caring didn't just start yesterday or today. It started a long time ago. It said he was concerned about the welfare of his mother. He was concerned about every little thing that he thought might go on. Even though he didn't say it, but in, if you really look at this word and you think about it, you're going to see that he was concerned because he knew he wasn't going to be there. He know that um, by him being the eldest son, he can't take care of her no more. Because that was what he was supposed to do as a son, the eldest son back in the day. And so I believe at this time, while Jesus was on the cross, we understand that Joseph, her husband, had already died. So then... That's why she was in the hand of Jesus. Because it was Jesus who had to now take on, had to take on the caring of his mother because the father was not there anymore. So by him being the elder son, he had to take care. And then as we really look at this thing, it was traditional. It was very tradition for this to happen, for, for Jesus to be the one who take care of her. See, we, we got to know when to put this thing in our oldest son's hand. We got to know. We have to know and we have to believe and trust in God for all these things that he said for our son. Because some of them got it and some of them don't. Some of them will and some of them won't. I'm just talking about the pain with concern. The, the pain that he had was, I mean, it was just so, just so bad to the point where his strength was built up. To see what his mother was going to go through without him being there. But we're going to say, look, this is what he said. He said, John said to the disciple, he said, behold thy mother. So they had to be standing close together. They had to be, he had to already, he had to already embrace her because she was crying. He had already embraced her. And, and Jesus knew. Now, I can let this go right here because I have someone who is able. I have someone who can do this after I'm gone. He said, I got someone who believe like I do. Who walked with me through the whole time, even in a time such as this. I'm just talking about the pain with concern. And, 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 and about us being men and women of God. We have to know it's, it's going to come to us too. When, when we have to be concerned, even while we are in pain, 
when we're going through being broken and torn because, see, we don't understand the heart have vows. And when you are torn down to the heart where your vow begin to ache, there's pain there. And the reason why, we're going to get to this point, reason why Jesus chose John. He chose John because neither one of his brothers was incapable of taking care of the mother. And then he chose John because John was his beloved friend and close friend and his family. The, the, the brothers had a disbelief in the things that Jesus was doing. They, they, they walked around, but they weren't with him in agreeing and walking like they were supposed to, but they were just in there just looking and trying to deceive just as the other people was doing. So then, when, when you think about how close Jesus and John was, this would make you just cannot, you, you got to understand that because it was 12 disciples, right? Those 12 disciples walking with Jesus invented what? A new family. That's, that's, that's what it was right there. When, when, when Jesus told John, behold your mother. That's all he was doing. He was creating this new family. A new family, y'all. And, and we, we got to be able to know how to walk in this new family. This new family ain't nothing to play with. This new family is about what Jesus wanted. This new family is about what we need to be doing even up to this day. The pain with concern. Y'all be blessed. Amen. We want to pause right here for a minute and go ahead and take up the offering at this time, too. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody will get, a, get an offering to give. I'm going to give on the Givelify myself. But if you have an offering, get to yeah, with that. Yeah. <clears throat> so you have an offering. You can bring it on up at this time. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Everyone that's given, please stand. We pray over the offer. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the gifts and the giver of the seeds that are sown into the ministry to build your kingdom. We pray you bless every person that had to give and had not to give, oh God, that you restore unto them a hundredfold blessing plus and that they would begin to live <clears throat> and abide in the overflow, oh God, that you rain down from heaven blessings unmeasurable into their hands oh god in jesus name we pray amen amen amen, amen. <clears throat>
Beautiful words spoken today. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to have Prophetess April come forth and bring the word God has given her as well. And then we're going to have the, uh, the last one. It is finished by Pastor Anthony Hibbler. Amen. Ten minutes. <laughs> That's an inside joke. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I ain't going to need no 10 minutes. We're going to cut this cake in five. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe, though, that it is in order to bless the Lord. I know this is a Friday. Look like ain't nobody in the building. But you here. You here. And because you here, the Bible said, let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. And I believe this is a good Friday. That's what I believe it is. Good Friday. I know we ain't at no funeral. Hallelujah. We are actually probably more so at a wedding. Hallelujah. A covenant. Hallelujah. Event. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just believe that praise is in order for the Lord. I don't care what we feeling, what we dealing with, what's going on in us, what's happening in our house. Praise is still in order. This is Good Friday and it's all good in the neighborhood. It's all good. Hallelujah. I'm going to go straight to my scripture, John 19. And we are going to go right down to the 28th verse. And mine is, I thirst. I thirst. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was a set, there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. Hallelujah. So we go, I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Because somebody going to take up the tail end of this thing. Hallelujah. But Jesus made a statement at one of the most pivotal times during this process. Because how many of you know this was a process? This was a process. We talking about hours. It's almost like you're waiting for um, your sentence to be read. You know, when you're sitting there and you're waiting with eager expectation, you don't know if you're going to be proven guilty or innocent, and you're scared of what's going to happen, and maybe you knew you was guilty, hallelujah, but you were scared to face whatever was coming next, and Jesus is hanging on this cross, awaiting the moment, all of this to get to the point where he say, I thirst. See, all everything led up to the thirstiness. Everything was bringing him to the point of thirstiness. See, he was dried out, uh, dried out in the world, dried out from sorrows, and dried out from the situation, dried out from carrying the cross. He was dried out from everybody seeing the sin of the world. He was dried out from thorns in his head and, and getting spit on and attacked. He was dried out. He was lashed and beaten. He was dried out. And he got to the point in human, in his humanism and also in his spiritual, spiritualism. He got to the point where he was naturally and spiritually thirsty. So in the natural, what the man did, he took the sponge and he dipped it in the hyssop and he put it to his mouth and Jesus took the sip Hallelujah. He said, I'm thirsty. They, they quenched the thirst. But I believe that Jesus wasn't talking about that kind of thirst. I believe that Jesus was saying, I'm thirsty for my father. I'm thirsty for the book to be closed. I'm thirsty for it to be written. I'm thirsty because it's coming to an end. I'm thirsty because I'm finna be reunited with my father and it feels good. I'm thirsty because this is about 
to be over. I'm thirsty because I'm going back to glory. And if I don't go, the Holy Spirit is not going to come back. I'm thirsty to go down to the grave. I'm thirsty to get the keys. I'm thirsty so that you can live again. See, he was saying, I, 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 I'm thirsty. I, I got a mission. Uh, anybody, y'all know what it's like to be thirsty. How many of you have ever been real thirsty? And you went to the refrigerator and you saw sodas in there. Maybe you saw juice in there, but you know no soda could quench your thirst. And no juice could satisfy this. You needed some water. And that's what Jesus said. I'm thirsty, but not for this. I'm thirsty for the will of my Father to be done in the earth. And I thirst. That's what he said. That's what he said. Because he knew. The Bible says right here. It says that. Hallelujah. After this Jesus knowing. Knowing. It comes a point where you know. I done got to the end of this thing. It comes a point where you know all of my suffering and all of my travailing and all of my crying and all of my praying. Now it's time for results. Now it's time for answers. And now God is finna respond. Jesus said I thirst because he knew my daddy finna respond. He finna respond. See, now I can close the book. Now, now I can get up out of here. Now, because I know that everything been fulfilled. I went through the struggle. I carried my cross. I made it through the garden of Gethsemane. I could have gave up in the garden, but I had to get to the point where I said, I thirst. See, if he gave up in the garden, he never would have said, I thirst. But everything that happened, this is what the Bible says. All things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled. So all of that was about all of this. All that Jesus went through in 33 years of ministry was about this moment right here where he said, I thirst. 33 years of, of ministry summed up in one word, two words, I thirst. I crave it. You know when you get thirsty, you crave it water. Your body calls for it. Your body wants it so bad, you almost about to have a fit if you don't get some water. Jesus said, I'm craving it. I feel it. I can feel it in my spirit. I feel it. Somebody is about to be redeemed. I feel it. Somebody is about to be set free. I feel it. Somebody's life is about to be altered. I feel it. Deliverance is about to come to the world. I feel it in my body. I feel it in my scars. I feel it in my bones. I feel it in the blood that shed. I feel it and that's why I thirst hallelujah he was thirsty and that's what Jesus said I, I need some people that's thirsty hallelujah we got to get to the point where we're saying to God and we're saying I thirst Lord I'm hungry for you I desire you I just want to be where you are I just want your will to be done I just want you to get the glory I just want you to be glorified I just want you to be pleased I want my life to represent all that you are to me God I thirst I thirst for the living water I thirst I thirst for the son of God I thirst I thirst for righteousness I thirst for holiness I thirst hallelujah he said I thirst I want to be satisfied I want to be filled up I need the Holy Ghost and that's why Jesus said I thirst too because there is a comforter coming after me that they 
are going to be waiting on. And when they get the promise, the promise that I fulfilled, hallelujah, there will be a satisfying of the thirst. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's be thirsty, church. Let's be thirsty. It don't care what's going on around us. We better be thirsty. We better be thirsty for the living word. Thirsty for the word of God. Thirsty for righteousness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a hand. Praise for that word. That was powerful. Amen. What are you thirsty for today? What are you thirsty for? Are you thirsty for the word? Are you thirsty for the world? That's something to think about. Amen. When you have that desire on the inside and a passion yes, for the things of God, the world and all its treasures cannot satisfy your thirst. Amen. Only the word of God by the spirit of the living God can satisfy your thirst. Go going to have Pastor Anthony come forth. Anthony here at this time. The word. Come on. Keep on praising. It is finished. Come on, keep on praising them. Hallelujah. Now, I know of all days, I ain't going to have to get up here and pump and prime y'all to give him some praise after all these words that just went forth. And, and, and if for no other reason to get up and give him some praise in this building, if you made it out here today, that means you walked, you, you, you crawled, you did whatever you need to do to get here. But now that we are here, it is a celebration. That's what we came here for today. That's what we came here for today because a lot of us want to say that when Easter comes and we wear our 17-piece suits and we put on our ball gowns and we do all of that good stuff, that that's the part. But let me explain something to you. If you're going to do anything in this world for him, he say faith by faith, not by sight. And if you got faith, before it even get done, you already begin to praise him. You already begin to praise him. So what happened on Friday was getting us pumped and primed for what was going to happen on Sunday when he got up. So somebody ought to stand up and give the champion some praise. Hallelujah. Bless your Lord. We're going to keep this fire burning. Why not? Why not? Why not? Come, come, come on with it. Uh, we're going to go to uh, John 19. We still where we was. Just keep on going. We're going to keep on reading. We're going to go to the 30th verse. And, and Mama, if you don't mind, read that for me. And we're going to keep on going. Therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. And we want to keep, like I said, we want to keep this fire going. So look here. Um, right there, they were trying to be sarcastic. He said he was thirsty. So they had already gave him a crown of thorns trying to be funny with that part. But how many of you know when he, when he got that crown of thorns, what came out? Come on, come on. I know it was the blood. Some, some blood came out, did it not? And now what they did not know, the devil did not know when that blood came out. Why well, you want to keep on being funny. Y'all want to be sarcastic. You want to put a crown on. You want to go ahead and you want to give me some vinegar. But, but, but how many of you know when he said it is finished, what he was doing was he was looking at the general and he was saying mission accomplished. That's what we're going to talk about right quick. We're going to talk about mission accomplished. I'm glad that when, 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 when they did all they did, when them Sadducees and Pharisees wanted to come up and be sarcastic, everything he did, you ain't supposed to do that today. You ain't supposed to, if you, who you talking to? Who you talking to? You're going to tell me what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not if you knew who I was. Like he told that Samaria woman at the well, if you knew who I was. If you knew who I was, you would be asking me for some living water. So when he said he thirsty, you right, sister, I'll high five you in the spirit. Give me some of that. Uh, uh, he wasn't asking for no water. So y'all little vinegar that y'all trying to be funny with, what, it wasn't funny at all. He, he, I got the last laugh. Now check this out. Check out what's about to happen in three days while you're trying to be funny. All right, this sixth word on the cross was, it is finished. Now these words... Were, were said loudly and as we stated with everything even when uh, Minister Lashonda began she said that he said it well he said it in a loud voice okay yes like, 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 my, like my brother here said uh, 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 Pastor Charles said that he was saying what he said loudly for everybody else to hear huh it's called a proclamation I'm proclaiming I'm proclaiming it is finished it is finished. Now, I got three points that I want to uh, talk about, and I'm going to be real quick, and then I'm going to get down after I talk about a fourth point. 
that I want to uh, make known. The words were a cry of victory. A cry of victory. So when we go around every day and the devil try us, when we say, victory is mine, victory is mine, and we don't say yesterday, we say, victory today is mine. That's when you can tell Satan, get on behind me, sucker, because victory is mine today. I'm claiming it, and I'm going to walk in it, and we're able to do that because our small life victories are just but a, a piece of what we got when he was on the cross. So before we even got here, we had victory. So when we understand how to walk, and I'm not talking about when you got out, uh, uh, out the womb and, and, and you learn how to walk. I'm talking about when we get in the spirit and we have been birthed anew by God and we learn how to take them steps doing what he said to do the way that he said to do it. That is when we can say that victory is ours. When he said it is finished, it, it, it was a vivid picture that we should replay every day, every time the devil try us. And believe it or not, we are being tried today more than we ever have. I get up here and every time I try to give y'all a little glimpse of what's going on. Look in your Bible. Listen to what they're talking about in the news. See how they line up and see that the devil is trying the craziest stuff that you could think of. He trying it. Yeah, y'all thought it was something when they were around here with the rainbow. The rainbow means a covenant. I'm not coming back anymore to uh, uh, do it with water. I'm coming back again. There ain't going to be no more water. He promised you that. And every promise he gave you, you can stand on. He promised you, I'm not coming back anymore with water. But I'm coming back with fire. And I assure you when I come back, you didn't like it when I came in on, on the ass. I came in and I sat on that. And you said I should have a horse. You said I should have my horse decorated. You said that I should come in as a king. And you got mad because I came in humbly. Because that's what my father said for me to do. Because it wasn't time yet. It wasn't time. But when I come back, I'm coming on a horse. And when I come back, the, the word says that the bottom of his robe has blood on it. God forbid we, we act like we don't understand that blood is because he coming back to fight for me, for you. The second part, it was the climatic point of the crucifixion. All of these words that we heard before now, it was leading up to the climax. The climax, when he said it is finished, that meant it was finished. And why was the celebration necessary? The celebration was necessary because the moment he said it was finished, he said, hey, Lord, I did my part. I did my part, Daddy. Hey, Daddy, I did it. I did what you told me to do. This was symbolizing that everything that he came in the earth to do, he had completed it. This is what was necessary. So even when he wanted to pull back, he said, if it be your will, take this cup from me. Even when he wanted to give up on it, he didn't. He stood there, or he hung there, and he took it for you and me. He took it. This is the colossal victory. When we think about victory, this was the coloss colossal victory. Lastly, these words represent the completion of the earthly work that Christ came to accomplish. Christ was proclaiming to his father, mission accomplished. The stage had now been set for the miraculous resurrection. See, it was not enough that he came, he hung, and he bled, and he died. But it was about the fact that he did not stay there. He didn't stay there. So now when we look at a cross, it represents the fact that he ain't on it. He ain't on it. He ain't on it. When they rolled that tombstone back and they go, went into that cave to look. <laughs> Did you hear me? I said, ha <laughs> ha. Huh? Death, where's your sting? Sting, where's your victory? You ain't got it. You know why you ain't got it? Because I got the victory. Huh? He said, I got the victory. The victory is mine. Huh? Every time he looked in that devil face, everything he wanted to try, everything he thought he could do, he couldn't do it. You better know that in your life today. Everything the devil try. And when you wake up in the morning, yes, he shiver. Why? Because that's another day that you got to realize the power that you really hold. It's time out for sitting back, waiting on somebody else to come through the door who's going to do what God got you doing. Everything that God said for you to do, I decree and declare right now, everybody under the sound of my voice is going to do everything that God said for us to do. Every song he said sing, every step he said take, every move he said make in the name of Jesus. It is done, even now. And as I get ready to take my seat, I want you to understand that after these seven words, and he was resurrected and he came back and he talked to the disciples, his first words to them were, peace be unto you peace be unto you. Not just saying for now. He was saying I gotta go. I got a new position. I got a whole new job now. I got promoted. 
I'm going up here to be the mediator. I'm going to go up here and sit on the right hand side of a daddy. I got promoted. But guess what? Y'all did too. And when he talked to them disciples, we wasn't here yet. But guess what? He was talking to us too. He was talking to us too. You got a promotion. You got a promotion. So when people out here and they hurting, he didn't gave you something to go out there and tell them to make them feel better. When he, when he, when he, when he went, he, he said, look, I'm leaving, but that same uh, compassionate love I had on there is for you to give to the people because people are out here looking for it. I be on TikTok with an app on, on the phone. It's an app. They looking. Before I came here today, we sitting on there cracking jokes and all this, that, and other, and it always baffles them how, how I can go from he, 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 and slide right up to now look. Today is Good Friday. If y'all in your house right now, y'all have not prayed, you ain't anointed your house, it's Passover. It's Passover. When Passover comes, you should have your house anointed. Anything in your house that resemble anything that God might be mad at, if you think he might be mad at it, get it up out of there. God is not playing. It is time out for us sitting and think that we can keep on playing and going back and forth. Uh, 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 Pastor Denise said, you can, you, can, you can repent and play with yourself if you want to. And I like that she said it like that because who are you playing with? You're playing with yourself because God knew you before, when you was in the womb. He knew you before you got in the womb. So it's time out for playing. He came off that cross. He was resurrected for me and for you, but not just for me and you to take what he did for us and say, he did this for me. He did it for you so you can go do some stuff for somebody else. Now get your saved, overly sanctified, and, and, and holy self to a point where you think it's just for yourself up out there and do what you're supposed to do with it the right way. It is finished. Amen. Amen. That was awesome. Awesome word. Amen. I want to read something in Matthew 27, 51 through uh, 52. It says, And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. That's how powerful his death was. Broke the rocks. And the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. You read in verse 53 and said, And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. That is so amazing of the magnitude of Christ's death. Amen. When he died, there was a phenomenal event that took place. Even the souls in hell were raised up because of the power that God had displayed through the death of our Savior. And that is so awesome. It's good to see Pastor Terry in the house again. We've been praying for you, our sister. And to see God bring you out once again is such a blessing. Pastor Owens, you want to share anything before we leave?
right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Right. Amen. Pastor Terry, you have anything you want to share with us? I just want to say it's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, it's been a long time coming. But the change came, y'all. The change came. And you know that enemy gets he's trying to get so clever. And me and Pastor Anderson, we figured we had this. Now, we had them this time because we made a decision to do something where only God understood because we realized that every time me and him talked and I proclaimed something, the enemy was listening. So he was setting up battle. I'm just setting up arrangements. Amen? So we know who was winning. Okay? But in the midst of it, I ended back in the hospital. Another dead woman walking the green mile. But you know, this death sentence this time really did something to me. Because I laid in that ER, what, Thursday, right? Thursday night, a Friday, till a late Friday night, waiting for a room. And the same they was trying to get me to breathe. Couldn't hear nothing, nothing was moving. But I told Denise and Deborah, go home. I'm going to be fine. God got me. I'm not going nowhere. He already did what he wanted me to do. What he wanted me to do. Listen, I learned laying in that hospital room them five days. You right. Out of everything that I was going through, all my phone calls had to do with family. Wasn't nothing straight or right, 100% about it. Okay? And God revealed to me, it's not just your family. When the nurse came through the door, she wanted prayer for her family. The doctor had me praying for his family. AIDS praying for their family. One of my daughter friends 20 years ago came in, heard I was there, had me praying for her family. He said, now I want you to tell me what's about. This about the kingdom, y'all. See, it can't be about me, me and mine. Pastor Anthony and his, Pastor Charles and his, Pastor Owens and his, Deacons, it got to be about the kingdom. Everybody that got food and gave life is part of the kingdom. We can't pick and choose our peculiar people because God don't do that. That's not of God. And to say that you're a woman of God or a child of God and don't care about people if they're not blood connected, Blended, connected. Come on, come on. You've been hypocritical about a kind of love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's agape love. But it's about the kingdom, y'all. Yeah, and we got to start preaching, teaching, dancing, singing. Kingdom. Yeah. All this competing in the churches. Competing between churches. It can't be about the money. Because my father rich. He don't need no money. Can't be about the money. God has showed me so much these last five days. My daughter's like, now, Mama, don't you go in there doing a lot? You know you can't hide it. I said, I can be able to do everything God want me to do when I hit that door. Because he has empowered, equipped, and appointed me. I'm coming back with oxygen and shoes running. I ain't coming to sit. I told God, listen, I'm ready. I've been ready a long time ago. How many bouts of cancer back? 
But I tell you every day when I hit the floor, it's on you, God. If you choose for me to stay here so that I can help try to get some more family and friends and your people in, use me. Use me till you can't use me no more. But if you feel that I have done a well job and my season is up, then take me. I'm yours. And that's where I stand today. So y'all keep praying for me because I'm going to be a praying sister. I told my family last night, they whooped me good yesterday, Tony. They set me up, had me spend $300 on a birthday party for Dana, invite people and everything, and then decided they was going to switch it from the holy ground, because that's what my house is. Me and my house, we serve God. When you come there, there's an aroma. There's a feeling when you come to my house of godliness. They want to take it somewhere else where they can do what they want to do. Well, not off this $300. Y'all do y'all. I'm fixing to pout, lay down here, talk to God, and I'm going to sleep. I'll serve it on Easter to people who don't have nothing to eat. Okay? It won't go to waste. I said, but one thing y'all did do, y'all taught me today. Because the ones that's close to me know I'm always that one making a way. Coming in, making things happen. I don't do it by myself. I have a mighty power behind me that equips me to do those things because he's trying to win them over to the kingdom. But I told him, y'all with me good today. I ain't broke down and cried like that. Denise will tell you, didn't I? I told her, I called her, I said, kill the down to everybody. Don't even come. Y'all with me today, y'all with me real good. But listen, I finally passed the test, Pastor. <laughs> I finally passed the test. And my reward is the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Powerful testimony. Amen. With well, glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. All right, there's nothing else. We can get ready to go. Amen. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. If you can reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place. If you can. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for your visitation in this place today. We thank you, O oh God, for the different messages that were speaking of today, O oh God, that will help continue to inspire, edify, and build up the body of Christ. Those who heard it, even over the airways today, Father God, that you touch their lives, change their hearts for the better. And we thank you, God, as we leave this place, but never from thy presence, that your grace, Father God, will be bestowed upon us. Your, your face will shine upon us. You'll give us the peace we need to continue to rest in the promise of your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You dismiss.